What's happening, people? Welcome back. What is the point of the world? Not reality, not the universe, but the world. Civilization, society, economies, governments, things like this. Why do they exist? What are they for in relation to us? Well, we're going to discuss. My name is Lex, and you could call me a philosopher or even a guru because I teach people how to perform existential rehab on themselves. But I simply consider myself a communicator and a student in the art of living well in an unwell world. Welcome to my channel. After watching season five of The Expanse, I realized I had a very good model to explain or detail what I see as the point of the world, what I think everyone should see as the point of civilization, culture, society, economies, governments, what have you. In season five, especially toward the end, the last episode and the end of the last episode, you see Admiral Solvater and Lieutenant Babbage crossing the ring gate, seemingly being destroyed, but before they were obliterated, they had a conversation about the failings of their society, Martian culture and society. They believe their civilization, their heavily militarized civilization, failed not because it was too strict, but actually because it was too accommodating, too loose. It was too concerned with individual liberty and emotion and things like this. And they saw a much more strict and tightly controlled society as being the way. What they believed is that a more strict society, one that was more single-minded and focused on survival, could cultivate the power, the might, and the understanding, especially with the help of alien technology, to overcome any obstacle and to stave off any threat. They needed to get under one umbrella, under one mind, and there was no time for play, no time for frills and any of the niceties of life if we were going to survive and grow and prosper. What they were willing to do, or more so what they saw, was that the vast liberties that many people on earth enjoy actually create too much variability and flex to control people, to put people on the same page when they're facing great threats and obstacles. So what they seemingly were willing to do was to forego the things that make life worth living, make life enjoyable, just to preserve life, to continue the existence of life. You understand that what we're doing of course. On Lacuna, we won't have a civilian world to cushion us if we fall. Dishonorable discharge will be a bullet. We have to be more pure now than Mars ever was. One mind, one cause. This type of thinking is hyper-rational, logical, and it even makes sense in times of great challenge and strain and difficulty because being single-minded, being strict, being focused can help you overcome obstacles and stave off threats and achieve goals with more regularity and surety. But it's also not at all the basis that you can build a world on, not for living things. It's too narrow, it's too strict, it's too constraining for a life form. We are living and life by definition is sensitive. Because of that, we're impacted by our environment continually and everything affects us in some way, even if we're not aware of it. So you can't take a narrow approach to a broad and sensitive and connected thing or you will likely overlook some key considerations in the needs and the wants and the rightness for this life form. And I think this is true no matter whether we're talking about a fruit fly, an amoeba, and it's really no more true than when we're talking about ourselves when we're talking about human beings. The reason we're so inclined to adopt this way of thinking, especially in scary and challenging times, is because it's incredibly effective. If you only see the world as something that keeps life alive and life is something that must keep going, then you can hit your goal with a pretty good chance of success. All you need to do is keep people fed, keep them from dying, and keep them either out of the way or productive and useful in some manner, and then the world is good and people are fine. Well, that's okay if we're talking about something that is objectively knowable. The state and condition of it is objectively knowable, but you cannot determine the condition of a human being objectively. We could know every physical detail about the structure and function of someone else's brain but still not understand what it feels like to be that person. Subjective qualities that you can't accurately describe or measure. Qualia are unique to the person experiencing them. Because insensitivity contributes to biological success in tightly controlled environments, contained environments, narrow environments like labs and factory farms, and because we generally just want the use of a thing and not the understanding of it, we are likely to adopt this way of thinking in challenging and scary times. The quality of a thing being dead or alive, we can quantify, but the subjective state of a being is much more difficult to get at. Therefore, building a sensitive and accommodating world for living things is much more difficult than building a world that keeps things alive. A survive and grow at all cost approach to world building will keep life alive and multiplying, likely, but it is a grand error 
And I think all we have to do is look at the expanse in the protomolecule technology in that, really just human nature to see why. If we adopt that approach too strictly, we will become like the protomolecule. We will become biological machines, willing and able to use anything at their disposal, anything they can, without consideration, without concern, and without a single pause or flinching. And that will be the end of us. We will do whatever we can to achieve our narrow aim and goal. And I don't think anybody wants to be that type of life form. And they don't want to live in that type of world, I don't believe. In my opinion, and I hope yours as well, civilizations, societies, especially technologically advanced societies and galaxy-spanning civilizations, have one point, have one reason for being. And that is to enhance the subjective quality its members experience of their own existence. If it isn't to enhance the subjective quality each member has of its own life, then why do they exist? What is the point? Why would an intelligent being build a world that only keeps it alive and multiplying? We can imagine building a world like this for another being, but why would you build that world for yourself? Why would you build a world that does not actually improve the way you feel and experience existence? It doesn't make sense. One of the main obstacles or oppositions to building a world that has the primary and sole goal of enhancing continually the experience of its members is that we cannot see the experience of other people. We don't know their subjective state and we mistrust and distrust because we're not in knowledge. We don't understand ourselves even, generally, because communication is lacking. We don't have direct insight into another person's experience and we don't really work to mediate these gaps. So we want people to be on the same accord and quantifying things like money, like currencies, is a better way to come to some common agreement about what is wanted, what is needed, than actually being intuitive and building a world that can accommodate billions of individuals working toward slightly separate goals, slightly separate aims or unknown aims. We don't trust it. The key performance indicator, the metric that we value and qualify and quantify life on now is money, but that is detached, that is divorced from our experience. And until we get ourselves to a point where we can understand how people are doing subjectively, how the world is in total to us, then we are far off from building a world that is intelligent for intelligent beings. We can't simply make any world and expect that world to make us good, improve our condition, make us happy. But we should build a world where anyone will have an increasing chance and likelihood of experiencing a desired life. That is the way. How do we do that when we cannot accommodate 7, 8, 10 billion different perspectives, goals, and aims? Well, we apply the principle of generality, the principle of equivalency, and we build up from there. We begin with what we are generally, broadly, we're human. Account for those needs, make sure that's provided to everyone, and then we allow enough flex for individuals to find their own way based on their own understanding of themselves on top of that. And we continue that indefinitely, deepening our understanding of ourselves as a species and our understanding of ourselves individually until the end of time or until we're no longer in need of a civilization or society because we've advanced to the point of individual autonomy. Absolutely. To sum this all up, the point of the world is to act like a cocoon or a womb, nurturing us as we develop and grow, really sheltering us from our environment and more so protecting us from ourselves until we get to the point we no longer need the sheltering and protective constraining environment. Once we reach that point, we're something else, no longer human as we know ourselves, but we're alive. If we look at this another way, try to see this another way and operate in any other manner, under any other philosophy or narrative, we will build nothing but a cage that keeps us surviving and propagating, multiplying, but not growing and living. We'll be stagnant, moving through space and time, but undeveloped. And if we have enough technological capability, we'll just build a matrix. And that's the end of life, in my opinion, because it doesn't allow for growth, expansion, novelty, and newness. So that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is this the point of the world? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also head to Medium if you have a Medium account and read the companion article to this video if you want something more structured or detailed. And if you don't have a Medium account, head to my website. I have it up over there. Either way, I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you subscribe. I hope to see you on another one. You have a great day. Take care. Later.